Good evening, everyone. Thank you for taking time out of your schedule to talk with us about our fiscal year 2015 budget. We're just now at the beginning of the process. My name is Councilman Ron Nuremberg. I represent District 8. And to my left is Councilman Joe Cryer, represents District 9. Uh, this meeting is about setting the agenda for City Council as we go into our goal setting meeting, which is going to take place next week, a week from today, on May 27th, where the City Council will lock ourselves in a room, figure out what we're going to do next year with the budget. So thank you all for being here. Um, I also want to start by saying happy birthday to our City Manager, Cheryl Scully. I'll hand the mic off really quickly to my, cal my colleague, uh, Councilman Cryer, but first I will say that I think we both agree on one thing, that is we live in a great community. We have some significant challenges with the budget. It's a $2.3 billion budget, but we are blessed to have wonderful city staff uh, from top to bottom, and we're gonna make a great uh, year out of this year with the challenges, with your input, and at the end of the year, we'll say that we got a job well done. So, Councilman Cryer. Thank you, Ron. Uh, just a quick show of hands here. How many of you think, as Ron said, next week when we lock ourselves in that room, we should throw away the key <laughs> and, ju and just stay in the locked room? <laughs> um, I share Ron's thanks for you all participating in this. This is my first go round on this, and I'm trying to make as many of these as I can, frankly, because I want to learn about them. So I I'm just here more than anything else to listen to you and to listen to the kind of input that you want to give to this process as it rolls forward. So we've got a lot of challenges, as Ron says. We've got a projected deficit we've got to deal with. As all of you know, I see some of my friends here from police and fire who we all love and respect. They're in the middle of negotiations on a contract. The results of that will have an impact on this budget ultimately, if not this immediate one. So everything that you give back to us is is critically important to this process and I am grateful to you for taking the time out of your schedule to do it as is Ron and I, where do we go from here Cheryl America's greatest city manager Cheryl Scully and the birthday girl the birthday girl thank you council members thank you all for coming tonight we aren't going to talk about how many years though none of none of that tonight 39th again uh, so welcome. We're glad you're here. I want to ask all of the city staff who are here to just stand up and be recognized. We have a lot of staff here and we have both of our chiefs in the back, Police Chief Bill McManus and Fire Chief Charles Hood, as well as assistant managers and department heads. So each table has a city representative to help facilitate uh, this evening and help your conversation. And we do, someone asked me when I came in and was saying hello, we take the comments that you give us and we've incorporated many, many of them into the budget. So you come up with good ideas and that's the purpose of having the meeting tonight to hear from you and to hear your suggestions as to what you think is important. But also as an educational process to share information with you so that you know uh, what is going on within the workings of city government because we want you to know and to be most uh, knowledgeable as you give us your suggestions in that process. So the way it works this evening, we have a short video that just summarizes our budget. Staff, you can sit down, that's okay. <laughs> Thank you for being here. Um, but we have a short video presentation that outlines the $2.3 billion budget that uh, Councilman Nirenberg just mentioned. And we'll talk about the budget challenges. So some of you may wonder, okay, we present the five-year forecast and we tell the council, here's what our financial position is and what it looks like for the upcoming year. And then um, you may say, but somehow that goes away and you present a balanced budget in August. And that is because we're required by law to present a budget. So what we do is take the suggestions that you give us and we take those priorities that are established by the mayor and council in the goal setting session and we prepare a financial plan that reflects what the council members want us to include in the proposed budget. And because we're required by law to submit to council a balanced budget, that's what I'm required to present to them and that'll be on August 7th, 
then uh, we work through the summer to reduce our cost, to change the way we're doing and presenting the business, doing the business for the city so that we can do it at least cost to you, the taxpayers. And that's really what it's about. How do we bring greatest value to you, our customers in the community, our residents, those who live here and care about the community? So we do our very best to give you the very best service, best value for the dollars that you pay. So let's take a look at the video. We'll make a couple of comments and then Maria Villa Gomez, the best budget director in the, in the country, <laughs> is here and she's going to give you a few instructions about how we best can obtain your input this evening. And we try different ways uh, each year. So we learn from the previous experiences and we try to make it better and give us your feedback at the end of the meeting as well. So let's run the video and then we'll have some uh, conversation about how the process works tonight, okay? The many services provided by the City of San Antonio are prioritized and funded through the adopted annual budget. This video will provide you with an overview of the many services provided by the City and explain how the City pays for these services. With an annual budget of $2.3 billion and 11,300 employees, the City of San Antonio strives to provide you with high quality services every day. So how does the city's budget work? The city's total budget is divided into separate funds, including the general fund, restricted funds, and the capital budget. The largest of these funds is the city's general fund, which receives funding from four major sources of revenue. Property taxes, sales taxes, CPS energy revenues, and other revenues. Property taxes represent the city's portion of the taxes you pay on your home and business. However, the city's portion of your total property tax bill is only about 25%. Sales taxes are collected on purchases made throughout the city and are dependent on the local economy. CPS Energy provides a portion of its gross profits to the city as a return on investment, and these revenues vary based on the South Texas weather. Finally, other revenues represent funding collected from user fees, licenses, and permits. Together, these revenues support the majority of city services. Two-thirds of the total general fund budget is allocated to the police and fire departments. With more than 4,000 uniformed personnel, the police and fire departments enforce the law, protect San Antonio residents, their families, and their homes. The remaining one-third of the general fund resources support critical city services such as streets, parks, libraries, code enforcement, health and human services, and animal care. The City of San Antonio is facing a financial challenge of $27 to $34 million in fiscal year 2015 in the general fund. Expenditures in the general fund are growing at a faster pace than general fund revenues. The financial challenges that the city faces in 2015 include the increased cost of providing health care benefits to uniformed police and fire employees, maintaining a AAA bond rating, maintaining a balance between public safety and other services paid by the general fund, and the many needs across the city including street maintenance, new sidewalks, library services, human services, and the maintenance of city facilities. In order to maintain a balanced budget in fiscal year 2015, as required by law, the city will have to prioritize services and redirect resources in the general fund. More than 66% of the general fund is allocated to the police and fire budgets. If the community desires to maintain or increase the funds allocated to police and fire, other city services such as streets, parks, libraries, animal care, code enforcement, and health and human services would have to be reduced. The city maintains more than 4,000 miles of streets, 
more than 400 miles of drainage infrastructure, and more than 1,300 traffic signals. The maintenance and preservation of the city's streets and sidewalks is the responsibility of the city's Transportation and Capital Improvements Department. Each day, city employees work to preserve and maintain streets across San Antonio by filling in potholes, as well as maintaining city drainage channels, adding bike lanes, and building new sidewalks. The Parks and Recreation Department maintains 244 parks, 14,816 acres of parkland, 145 miles of trails, 24 outdoor pools, and 29 community centers throughout the city. San Antonio's 26 libraries provide residents of all ages access to books, computers, and educational programs. Through the libraries, you can receive live homework assistance and download ebooks, audiobooks, music, and videos for free. The Animal Care Services Department is committed to improving outcomes for San Antonio's pet population through increased education, adoptions, and enforcement. For the current fiscal year, resources were added to increase spay neuter surgeries enhance licensing awareness, and reduce the number of loose and stray animals. As a result of these additional resources and many other efforts by the Animal Care Services Department, the city has been able to increase its live pet release rate from 30% in 2011 to 80% today. The city provides code enforcement officers who work throughout San Antonio to maintain the safety and integrity of our neighborhoods. These officers enforce the city's property maintenance code, address concerns caused by unoccupied and dilapidated structures, and help prevent and abate graffiti. Other important city services are funded by restricted funds that are not supported by property tax revenue. The rates and fees that support services paid by restricted funds cannot be used to pay for services in the general fund, such as police, fire, streets, or code enforcement. Services paid by restricted funds include garbage collection, review of new commercial and residential development permits, operations of the international airport, and the city's parking operations. Ensuring that the fiscal year 2015 budget is financially balanced and reflects the priorities of the community is a collaborative effort between residents, city leaders, and city staff. The city wants to know which services matter most to you. Let us know your priorities by attending one of five community budget input hearings scheduled from May 19th to May 22nd. You can also provide your input through the City's Budget Input Box, located inside libraries, senior centers, and online at www.sanantonio.gov slash budget. With your assistance, the City of San Antonio can continue to deliver high-quality services to all residents in our great community. So a couple, couple of things as Maria comes forward about the budget. Uh, over the past eight years, we have worked to improve the professionalism of city government and deliver the highest quality service at the least cost to the taxpayers. Uh, during that time frame, based on recommendations and with much consideration by the mayor and council, we've added <coughs> almost 500 police officers and firefighters to service our growing community and keep our response times low. Uh, we have reduced the number of civilian personnel by more than 1,200 people. So we actually have fewer city employees today than we did eight years ago. And if you think about it, we've added more fire stations, more libraries, hundreds of acres of more parkland. So we're changing the way we deliver the service to be as efficient as we can. We're now at a point where to balance the budget and to manage 
all of the expenses to provide high quality services to the community, we need to make some changes within the services we're providing today. So there was a lot of conversation in the video about, and I'm sure you've heard through the media and perhaps followed some of the work of the legacy task force appointed by the mayor and council to study pension and health care costs of our employees throughout the city organization. And in that process, the recommendations that came from the task force include making sure that we provide fair and equitable health care for our employees that is affordable to the taxpayers, a pretty basic concept. We know that we all contribute toward the cost of our health care, and that's what we're trying to achieve in our conversations with our police and fire personnel, making sure that what we're doing is fair and equitable for our employees our core service, public safety, and yet is affordable to the taxpayers. And we know that health care costs have been growing rapidly over the past two decades. So to manage those costs, what's happened is our public safety expenses are growing faster than our general fund revenue. And so it's consuming a larger and larger percentage of the general fund budget, meaning that to keep it balanced, and without raising taxes, and we have not raised our property taxes for more than 20 years. So to continue providing our quality services and manage the budget, that means that we have to cut that one-third of the budget that isn't public safety. No one wants to recommend reducing library hours or cutting our animal care services or reducing code enforcement or, heaven forbid, reducing street maintenance. We maintain 4,000 miles of streets. So there's a lot of work to be done out there. Uh, but we are required by law to maintain a balanced budget. So we're examining every aspect of the budget every year to make sure that we're doing the very best possible. And I want to thank those community members and employees who participated on the Legacy Task Force to help us come up with recommendations that were presented to the City Council. So all of this, your input tonight, those recommendations and our very best professional recommendations to the council will all be put together after we hear from the council in their goal setting session on Tuesday, May 27th, to come up with the best financial plan possible for the community. So now I'm going to turn this over to Maria Villagoma. She'll give you a few instructions as to what we're asking you to do at your tables this evening, and then we'll, ha we'll report out before we leave tonight. Maria? Thank you, Cheryl. Well, good evening and thank you for being here with us tonight. So now that you have heard a little bit about the budget, have a better understanding how the budget process works and the financial challenges that the city is facing, we want to hear your input. We need your help in prioritizing those services within the general fund that will allow us to propose a balanced budget to the city council on August the 7th. So at each of your tables, you've already seen the facilitator is one of our directors or assistant directors uh, of our departments. And we have three questions to ask you. The first question is if you can please identify areas within the general fund budget that you would be willing to reduce. Could be programs or services. Uh, from the video, there's also documentation that our facilitators have, and they will be able to answer any questions you may have as well. So tell us what areas you will be willing to cut in order for us to balance the budget, and give us a sense of the dollar amount if you can. If you cannot come up with a dollar amount, that's okay. Just give us a sense uh, of an idea of what are the services or areas that you would like for us to consider. The second question is, would you be willing to increase revenues uh, to offset the increased cost in the general fund, revenues such as our property taxes? Uh, for every one cent, if we were to increase one cent in the property tax rate, that generates about $7.4 million annually. The uh, impact to the average homeowner is about $14 a year. So that's just to give you an idea. The other fees in the general fund includes parks, for example, um, our river barge revenues as well, and some of the fees that we charge are at our community centers. And then the, the last question is, if we have additional funds and we could increase uh, some of the services that we provide in the general fund or we could reprioritize within the general fund, what are those areas that you would like us to increase or to add? 
in the next uh, budget. So that question is for you to identify three areas that you would like for us to add, and perhaps also identify where the money is going to come from. If there's another services that you would consider, perhaps it's not a priority for, for the community. So those are brief instructions. The uh, directors and assistant directors at your table will be able to address any questions. You have 30 minutes for this exercise at 7.05. So at 7.35, we'll ask each uh, table to have a representative to report back to the group on those uh, three questions that we ask you tonight. Thank you. Um, hello, could you introduce yourself? Sure, my name is Ron Nuremberg. I'm the city councilman for District 8. Very nice. Um, what is going on here? Well, tonight is one of five pre-proposed budget hearings where we listen to our community members. Uh, people from all over the community are coming to discuss their priorities for city council as we go into our goal setting meeting. So this is the very beginning process of how we assemble the city budget for fiscal year 15. We're about, um, now is, uh, we're in May, so we're about four months away from actually adopting the city budget. But we want to hear from our community members. We want to hear from our neighbors. We want to hear from organizations that are involved in the community to help us to understand what the community's priorities are then that can be reflected in our city budget. Um, have you done this before? Yes, well this will be my second cycle uh, of doing these hearings and going through a budget process. Uh, these, uh, the community meetings and the public input process for budgets have been going on for many years though. Um, we have a 2.3 billion dollar budget in the city of San Antonio so uh, we can't do that alone on council and we can't do that alone on council and staff. We want to hear from the public to make sure that we're addressing the services and the needs that are in our communities. And why is it important? Well, again, I mean, I think it's it's important because we live in a very vibrant and active community with a lot of different needs. It's very diverse. District district alone uh, and District 8 has many different facets and, and services that are, are required to keep our quality of life uh, high, and that's the same all across the city. So um, it's important that we hear from the community because we need to address the things that people really care about. We need to make sure that our basics are covered with police and fire, with street maintenance, with animal care services, library services, parks, and then all the other things that the city does to keep a good quality of life in San Antonio. We need to hear from you. Um, can you tell us a little bit about what's next? So what's next is after we go through the five uh, public meetings, we're going to compile all the data and responses that we've gotten on the budget. And then City Council next week will go into a day-long goal-setting session where we take the feedback from our our neighborhood meetings and we make that reflected in uh, the priority list that we give the city management. At that point the city management will then put together a budget. They'll take about a month when city council is on recess and work with each department to address some of the shortages. We are projecting a challenge in our budget this year of about 27 million dollars. So part of that process is city departments are going to go back and say what do we need to cut? What is, what is the public asking for that we need to do more of? Maybe a little less of. Put together the budget and then when we come back from recess in August we'll start deliberating on the proposed budget. We'll go back to the public and find out what changes we need to make, tweaks that we need to do, and then at that point we will um, adopt a budget. And we will adopt a balanced budget. We're going into this process knowing that there's about a 27 million dollar shortfall, so we do have to make some cutbacks. If people want to see extra things in certain departments, we're going to have to account for that as well. But when we come to council with a budget, it's going to be a balanced budget, and then we can move forward into fiscal year 2015. Um, so if someone isn't present tonight, can they still have their voice heard? Absolutely. We have budget boxes, uh, budget input boxes throughout the, throughout the city. You'll find them in, in libraries and city facilities. Uh, they can also go online to sanantonio.gov and uh, register their feedback uh, on, the, on the website there. They can also contact their council member. Um, by phone, by email, by Facebook, by Twitter, any time that you can get your council member, you can suggest uh, things about uh, improving our bud uh, improving our city and, and uh, instituting a good good budget. Okay. Thank you. Thank so you very much. Pleasure. 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 Y'all have a good night. Hello. There we go. Hello everybody, I'm Chris Garcia from the uh, Kenton Place 2 Homeowners Association. We're from Table 1. And we have this 27 to $34 million shortfall, so we had some ideas. 
Uh, if you align the uniform benefits with civilian employees, as, as much as we respect uh, the individuals who do those jobs, we have a, a budget crisis. You're going to raise about $16 million from doing that. Um, we thought there might be some efficiencies that can be worked out in economic development. Maybe instead of sending, you know, 10 people overseas for a trip, maybe five or six. Um, that'll be about 35000 not a lot. Uh, municipal court, maybe half a million, some uh, efficiencies there and also um, cutting about 1.6 from delegate agencies. And that was about 18 million we were able to find. And then for property taxes, 2% uh, increase, which we haven't raised property taxes in 10, 20 years. Um, and our city's grown quite a bit since the 80s or 90s. Uh, would be about 14 million. And based on the estimates we heard, it's only about 30 bucks per household. So that wouldn't be too bad. And then uh, residential alarm and renewal fees with a slight increase of about $5 per fee, we figured it'd be about 1.5. So we kind of broke even at about 15.5 with cutting about 18 million, depending on where you're at. And uh, that's kind of our ideas for dealing with the uh, budget challenge, to use the terms used by the city council. And then the challenge, our challenge to city council is Here's some things we would like to see increased. Uh, number one, traffic operation, because everybody wants to get home on time and early. Uh, libraries, yeah, we do have somebody at the table who's uh, from the library system. Uh, streets, everybody knows about all the potholes we have to deal with. Code and, for and sidewalks. Yes, and, we, and actually, actually, what's interesting is, actually there's some disability uh, part of that is in there. So if you know people with disabilities, that's actually where they get some of the, the funding to fix those. Code enforcement, all of us who are uh, from HOAs know about the importance of code enforcement and how that affects our neighborhoods. And uh, finally, animal care. Uh, we do have some people from part, parts of town where animal care is a serious issue with all the stray dogs. I know I like to volunteer for different campaigns, and yeah, there's a lot of stray dogs and stray animals. So that's, uh, that's our ideas. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. I think table four was ready to go next. First of all, I want to. First of all, I want to thank uh, everybody at our table. It was very participative, uh, Yolanda crazy and I love you. Uh, <clears throat> okay, let's, let's get started. Uh, in the uh, decrease area, we felt that uh, aligning uniform benefits with civilian employees is obviously very, very important. Uh, we feel that based upon a lot of work that's been done by the Legacy Task Force, the Chamber of Commerce, that if we align just health care benefits in police and fire alone, that would save the city an estimated $15 million a year. If we align dental and vision with city civilian employees, that would save the city roughly $4.5 million a year. If we eliminate the escrow fund, and the escrow fund is where the city puts into a, a, an escrow account for the benefit of police and fire, funds that can be used by police and fire for attorney's fees to pay for divorces, closing costs for the purchase of homes, attorney's costs for DWIs, uh, if we eliminate that, that would save the city $1.5 million. Tuition reimbursement. We feel police and fire should be reimbursed for all courses they take pertaining to their profession. We should not pay for courses that do not pay, that do not align up with their profession. That should save the city roughly $250,000 a year. We also believe that vehicle, the vehicle life can be extended. Instead of turning a vehicle in at 70,000 miles, turning it at 100,000 miles. These are very good vehicles, well built if they're maintained. That should, <clears throat> that should save the city roughly $200,000 a year. So just in police and fire alone, that's $21.45 million. Now, in addition, we felt that when you take city, police, and fire out of the entire budget, 
that leaves roughly 331 million left for all other budget categories. We feel that a 2% cut across the board for all of those different categories would provide 6.6 .6 million of cuts. Now, we also believe that should include the category of mayor and city council. The, the, the group wanted to make sure we emphasize that. But we also felt that not every category may need to be cut 2%. Therefore, we felt that when you go through the cut process, through the debate of each department, then the cuts should be brought to the city council for them to decide who should be cut. Should somebody be cut more than 2%, some less than 2%, but overall, that budget has to be cut by 2%. Okay. Uh, revenue uh, uh, generation, uh, code enforcement. Across the board, we felt very strongly that all code enforcement violations should be enforced. But particular, because we're a hub for tourism and hospitality, um, homeowners are now putting their homes up for rent uh, because uh, this is a great destination location. So we felt that charging a registration fee so a homeowner can put their home up for rent, also an annual inspection fee of that home would generate roughly $1 million a year. Also, uh, animal control. For animals um, that are, um, are collected by the animal control unit, they, a chip should be installed in each animal. And if that animal, once it is, it goes to an owner, if that animal is lost and animal control has to retrieve that animal, it's a $500 fee. We don't know how much that would generate, but we feel it's important to incorporate that into a revenue stream. And then lastly, um, areas that we feel, feel ought to be added. <clears throat> excuse me, I, excuse me, I get so choked up working with my group. Um, service areas to, to add, we felt parks, the parks is one of the uh, jewels of the city. And we feel that parks should be made available to all uh, uh, taxpayers in the city and also libraries. There's nothing more important than libraries to educate not only our children, but our adults and everybody in the community. And that's all I've got to say for table four. Okay, I think table five is ready to go next. Okay, hi everybody. My name is Jonathan Frank and I'm with SEIU and this is my first time doing something like this so forgive me if I mess up just a little bit. But um, at our table we discussed um, property taxes. If we, at first we came up with if you increased it by one cent per year then you would get about $10 million in revenue. And, but it would equal out to $14 that you get charged for, per homeowner. But we said, why not increase it three cents and then you get $22 million first year. So, um, and also with code enforcement, like a uh, gentleman, I forgot his name, I'm Joe. I think his name is Joe. He brought up that code enforcement would bring in another needed source of revenue. We also talked about, um, well, we had a little debate at our table about um, uh, citizen employees with uniform employees. Um, one argument was bringing police and fire down, their health benefits down to civilian level, which on, might not be a very good thing. But also the um, other argument was bringing up civilian employees to uniform level when it comes to health benefits and everything like that, which we couldn't figure out where the expense, where the money would come from, <laughs> but it is still a very valid argument that everybody should be paid the same. 
<laughs> that or should get the same health benefits because we can all agree that without the citizen employees of the city, a lot of stuff would not run. A lot of the revenue would not run. You would not be such a great capital in San, or just San Antonio yourself. You would not be such a great tourist spot without all the city employees that you had. And oh. all right, I'm getting claps. All right. <laughs> um, Oh, 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 and um, we also talked about the streetcar, uh, street cars that's coming in 2016, and we put that on, um, we might want to cut that, because they, some people think that you don't really need uh, street cars in San Antonio, which you really don't, because downtown, you just pretty much everything's in walking distance, and then that would kind of complicate things when everybody goes to Fiesta, so... <laughs> <laughs> But um, we also had what we wanted to add on. And the first thing is pretty much redistribution uh, of how uh, sidewalks and streets get taken care of. Now, uh, where I live over in near Castle Hills, there's a huge sidewalk on Northwest Military, which does not get a lot of foot traffic at all. So it's a, a, a it was a huge expense in anticipation of there being a lot of business and a lot of foot traffic. But on the north and the east and west side, there's sidewalks that are cracking, there's potholes in the street, there's things that are not going right on that side of town and you just need, if we could redistribute that, redistribute effort away from places that really don't need it and they're good, good the way they are and people feel that they're good the way they are, even people that live in those areas, to more needy places that would help stem the tide. Oh, I, had a, I had a thought, but I lost it. I'm sorry, I have to move on to the next one. Okay. Um, traffic operations in school zones and in uh, different accident heavy places in the city you need to increase signage, increase um, uh, pretty much just signage, like saying this is a school crossing zone or there's children playing, uh, speed limit signs, more traffic lights and everything like that. Do I need to cut down a little bit? Oh, okay. All right. My bad. I'm going to act like I'm at a concert and I'm holding like this. All right. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, and also another thing is animal care. Animal care in San Antonio, um, I've read their annual reports and they're going towards a no-kill San Antonio and it's been going that way for a long time. But in San Antonio right now, as I was talking to the lady over here, there's only 42 ACO officers in San Antonio with over 150 stray pets. Now, police, firefighters, city employees have to go after these pets. And police can get called on all sorts of calls for like, oh, there's a dog in my neighborhood, come get him. They have to go spend their man hours, gas, and all this money trying to track this animal, waiting for an ACO to show up. And then, um, also, um, if we pretty much, uh, oh, wow, I keep losing what I'm going to say. I'm sorry, y'all. Um, okay, yeah, that was pretty much my spiel. I'm sorry. I forgot what I was going to say, but yeah, that's me. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm from California. I can't join you on that one. <laughs> But the Spurs are my family's team, so I'm going for them. Go Spurs. <laughs> but thank you. I think table seven is ready. I'm going back. Finish this. I'm Jerome Stowe. I'm with the La Vida Tenants Association. I'm here with uh, Tanya Clark tonight from La Vida as well. Um, as far as service areas to cut, we looked at aligning the uniform benefits with civilian employees to the tune of $10 million. We looked at reducing the general fund portion of uh, the Department for Culture and Creative Development, which they use over in La Vita. And rather than use the general fund, use the, the hotel occupancy tax to the tune of $730,000 annually. We looked up the utility costs in La Vita. We have some firsthand knowledge here at this table that we believe we overpay an estimate of $100,000 annually to CPS. Um, we looked at increasing the property tax by two cents to create $15 million. We looked at leasing underutilized city property. We had some examples of 
the Redberry Mansion, and Linda had another example. Uh, uh, some of the plazas in La Vita, we have like 100,000 square feet in La Vita that is underutilized and underleased annually. Benavites. Okay. It's a community center that lost its funding and it's empty and it can be leased out again to, for more revenue. We looked at instituting more parks fees, especially with the holiday camping and cleanup um, as a way to generate more revenue. On the general fund budget balancer, we looked at moving money from the property tax, a half cent increase for 3.2 million to code enforcement. One of our table members here mentioned that beautifying uh, residential areas in San Antonio would uh, add value to the city and increase property value. And then we also decided that we should maintain our libraries because we feel they're an integral and important part to our city. Um, then sort of off the grid here, we looked at shifting a portion of the hotel occupancy tax from DCCD, which is the Department for Culture and Creative Development, to the CVB because we feel that the CVB can better enhance tourism and the income associated with tourism, such as sales tax, hotel tax, and economic activity. And that completes our recommendations. Thank you. Table two is ready to present. Good evening. I'd like to thank our city council representatives and the city staff here for allowing us to participate in this process. And uh, our uh, table had a lively discussion in several areas. Um, but first of all, we, uh, we know that um, there's only two ways to uh, look at a budget. You either increase revenue or you cut spending. And so one of the first things that we wanted to do was uh, to look at ways that we could uh, cut spending. And we uh, immediately identified um, 16.2 million could be saved if we eliminated all of the bonuses at City Public Service Board. And uh, also with SAWS, uh, approximately the same amount. Uh, we know that uh, both SAWS and City Public Service said that they had a revenue shortfall, but the bonuses probably could have uh, eliminated those shortfalls. And uh, we were very concerned about uh, the uh, large executive packages uh, that uh, some of our top officials have. We think there should be a, a freeze on that and, and no bonuses. If they need to remember that a public office is a public trust and if we expect our librarians and our teachers and our nurses not to receive, bon they don't receive bonuses, then I don't understand why public employees um, should uh, receive those bonuses as well. Based on the fact that uh, the average social security check in our, is 1,170 and we have many seniors that live on that alone. And uh, the average uh, pay in San Antonio is uh, approximately $51,486. And so if um, a family is struggling to pay taxes and fees and all of the increased costs, they certainly don't want these bonuses. Uh, another area that we were looking at was um, a, a reduction in outside consulting. We felt like if uh, the city has many experts that we have, uh, then we should rely on those people that are in the city and not spend so much money hiring outside consultants or, uh, to come in and tell them how to do something when they should know how to do it if that's their job. Um, I, I imagine that there are some exceptions to that, but there's probably too much outside consulting. Another area that we thought we should eliminate is the streetcar. We could certainly redirect that uh, money elsewhere. Uh, Although we discussed the merits of economic development, of bringing uh, such businesses as Toyota to our community, we felt like that we needed to look again at abatements, um, that maybe they shouldn't have such long-range incentives. Uh, that needs to be looked at. 
Uh, we also were talking about um, bringing in citizen oversight committees to look at various departments in our city government. Uh, Ronald Reagan, uh, when he was uh, governor of California, uh, brought in volunteer business people to look at various agencies and government and they saved millions and millions and millions of dollars uh, in waste and inefficiency and duplication of services. So I think that the, perhaps, uh, for example, uh, maybe a committee of uh, volunteer veterinarians could look at the uh, animal care and see if there are ways uh, that they might suggest that we could do a better job or save money. Perhaps engineers could uh, work with the street department um, and bridges to see if there are ways that we could uh, save money. I know that in uh, the San Antonio Independent School District, we had budget oversight citizens, the volunteers that worked uh, to oversee how bond money was spent to make sure that everything was correct. Um, let's see. All right, next page. Uh, areas that we felt like we needed to increase was our, uh, maintain or increase is our libraries because the libraries benefit everyone. And as a former classroom teacher, I know that I had a lot of students who uh, could not afford a computer and so they went to the libraries and did their work at the library. So we need our libraries. They're a integral part of our community. Uh, we also felt like um, that um, we need to have, in the area of human services, we need to increase funding for mental health in our community. Uh, that's a, we know everything from school shootings to uh, other issues that we need to address mental health uh, to uh, help prevent a lot of the problems in our community. So I think that would be a good investment. And um, Again, we felt like uh, we have a lot of retired people in San Antonio and we should uh, see, look at ways that we can increase volunteers to help with some of our services. And then also understanding that uh, city and county government is like a Venn diagram. Some have unique uh, areas of expertise, but also that in some areas there's overlapping. And so, Looking at those areas where there's overlapping services, perhaps we can see the ways that we could save money at the city and county level and prevent duplication of services at additional cost to taxpayers. Okay, um, my name is Grace, and I am Matt Middleton, um, and we had a really great discussion at our table. Um, some of the things on this poster were not, we, weren't, we didn't really reach consensus about everything, but these were ideas from the group. Um, some things were consensus, some things not so much. Um, on the service area to address the budget gap, we talked about aligning uniform benefits with civilian employees. Um, there was also a suggestion to increase revenues um, by increasing sales taxes and also um, business the, the business appraisals and the taxes that businesses pay. Um, and then for the priorities, we had a few. Um, Fire Station 43 having 24-hour EMS service, which they do not currently have and instead they send um, EMS um, from a, a location that's further away and takes a little bit longer to get to that area. Another area of um, priority for services was ACS education and making sure that people all over the city are aware of how to take care of their pets and the services of um, spaying and neutering their pets and how important that is to prevent um, strays and all of that, and then also the libraries, um, either maintaining or increasing budgets for libraries um, and library services and all of the um, programming that they provide for um, everyone in San Antonio as well as the technology resources that are available there. And then um, we suggested taking, making up this, this, this money 
from um, park fees, increasing park fees specifically around holidays, which I think another group mentioned. The Easter campouts, we talked about how a lot of times people um, leave a lot of mess at, after the Easter holidays and so a fee to kind of help clean up after that and also put towards increasing services in other areas. Also increasing the property tax, as other groups have mentioned. We suggested a two cent increase that would bring us um, 14 million dollars. And then um, the last one would be to create, similar to the way the library system has a friends of a library system that helps to raise funds for the libraries, that maybe there could be friends of parks as well that would help to raise funds to maintain parks in our city. And that's it. Thank you so much. Okay, table eight. Okay, we are table eight. Um, again, our group didn't reach consistency on everything, but for the most part, this is generally where we are. Um, so we discussed uh, cuts to administration, the administrative personnel, specifically those that are higher level, higher level within the departments um, within the city. Um, oh, thank you. <laughs> um, we also discussed aligning uniform benefits with civilian benefits as well. Um, we, we estimated about an $8 million save there. Um, for our revenue to be increased, we thought about property taxes again, that same thing of a two cent increase to get three, sorry, a three cent increase for us to get about 21 million in revenue from that. Uh, we also discussed fees. Um, specifically, we did discuss library fees, but those fees go straight back into the library budget. Um, to the city, the, the the, the library line item within the city, but sorry, yeah. Um, and also the same thing with park fees. Um, okay, all right, so for improvements, we're thinking about the uh, library, we're thinking about streets um, and ADA, specifically that was my point. Um, my father is a paralyzed veteran, so, and he doesn't actually live in the city, but he came to visit recently, and it was uh, rather tragic that he wasn't able to really get around the city. Um, because of the sidewalks being in poor shape um, and they're not really being alerts, traffic signals. So trying to drive and kind of navigate the city was a, a huge issue for him and myself because a lot of the places I hadn't gone to either. Um, so I think that we need to do a little bit more thinking about uh, accessibility for everyone because when you make you know, uh, public areas accessible, everyone stands to benefit from it. So I think we need to think about um, the, the traffic alerts, the the foot grooves, the, um, well, one of the examples I wanted to share now that's on my heart is I was driving up Days of Allah the other day, and there was a woman who was blind who was trying to cross the street just here, actually, at Vance Jackson and Days of Allah intersection, and she ended up not uh, having any aids there, so she pretty much almost got hit about maybe three or four times trying to cross the street with the service dog, and people actually blew their horns at her on the way. It was a very you know, tough thing to watch. Um, but I did my best of just trying to keep as far behind as I could, you know, just to kind of make it obvious that she was, you know, attempting to cross the street with a service dog. A lot of people were not paying attention to that. So that was one of the examples. That's one of the things that should not happen. Um, not in a, a city like this. It's a great city. It should not happen here. So we need to think more about ADA uh, big time in the city in terms of streets, traffic signals, and things of that sort. So that was one of the the biggest conversations that we had in the um, group. We also threw out the idea of energy efficiency um, in our building. So we know that we have a few green buildings already, the Sims Library, et cetera, but we need to also think about maybe zero emission facilities um, that would possibly come out of the capital budget, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming. But we need to think about those things because that would make us, I mean, San Antonio is a great city. We're about to be the stem cell capital. We're thinking about that already. We need to think about being the green capital. We need to think about being a place where there are facilities that literally run off their waste and their energy that, that they actually take in, their input and their output. That is a great thing. We need to think about those things. We're already a great city. Let's make it better. Um, so those are the same things we talked about. Uh, I think I hit everything. Yes, thank you. <laughs> OK, 
Okay, and table six, we're going to close with table number six. I'm going to save the best for last. Great, thank you. Thank you, Maria. I'm David McGee. I'm with the San Antonio Chamber of Commerce. And uh, first thing we talked about, a fairly consistent theme around the room this evening, is aligning the uniform uh, benefits for our police and fire uh, employees. Uh, since uh, we're talking about normal health care costs here, we're not talking about workers' comp or injuries on the job. We're talking about the same health care risk that you and I all bear. And since we're paying uh, nearly three times as much for our uniformed employees as opposed to our civilian employees, we felt like it was time that we should align those and make those more fair. And fair may have already been established by the civilian employees who pay, again, about the th we pay about a third for their cost. So we could save about $15 million by uh, aligning those costs. You've heard that before. One of the other things that uh, we thought we needed to do was to sort of fight through the, the barrier here and to be able to actually verify the actual dependents that are on that plan. Um, I don't know whether it's the police or the fire, but one of them uh, is, has we been barred through court action from being able to verify that the dependents that are actually on the plan are valid dependents. And I think every one of us on all of our plans, that seems like a routine thing that we do uh, every single year with our health care. It just seems logical that we ought to be able to do that. And uh, we couldn't quantify that, but it would be obviously a significant savings. Um, for non-unit informed employees, it, it, there's, about, there's an average of one dependent on the plan. For uniformed employees, there's 2.3 dependents. So we know there's a gap there that we need to kind of get into. So that should be something to look at. Um, on the revenue building side, uh, we also thought that uh, raising property taxes by 2% uh, or 2 cents per hundred would be something to look at. Um, and so that would raise about $14 million. We spent most of our time trying to figure out how to balance all that, so we're kind of spendthrifts. We didn't come up with a whole lot of new ideas to spend money, but we do think that there's too many potholes around the city, and we need to really reevaluate uh, the process of you know, prioritizing how we fix our streets. Um, San Antonio, our streets are known for being part of the drainage system. They take a lot of wear and tear, and our city's growing. It's something we need to reassess. And we also believe that um, literacy is important to our community and for economic growth, and we absolutely need to continue to invest more in our libraries. So uh, that's our group. Thank you so much. Thank you all for making time for this tonight. Again, we're at the beginning of the process. It's a very long process. All of the discussions from the tables today will be compiled by city staff as the city council goes into the goal setting meeting next week, where we'll get to, again, absorb all the comments that were made. And a lot of things are sticking out already on the revenue side, as well as on the expense side. And again, we're going into the fiscal year 15 discussions with a big challenge, Chris, that is indeed a 27 to $35 million budget shortfall. So knowing that you guys are caring about parks, about libraries, about street maintenance, about uh, police and fire protection, about the challenges on the other side of the ledger, which are, again, balancing uh, unsustainable increases in health care, things like that. These are all very important concepts that we're going to be discussing and find out how are we going to balance these things in a responsible way. I did want to address one thing, and I think it's a good way of ending the discussion tonight, which is how many of you, raise your hand, are on a city board or commission? Could you raise your hand? I want to say thank you to all of you, if you can give them a round of applause for the work that you do, which is extremely important work. I made note of one comment here, and I liked also the comments about ADA. I think those are very important things that we're working on as, as a city together. Um, but I did want to make one comment. There was, there was a concern about citizen oversight. So all those folks that raised your hand and all of the rest of you that are in this room tonight have shown that you go above and beyond. You are doing the work on behalf of your neighbors and the rest of the residents of San Antonio that we so desperately need in the area of citizen oversight. That's the exact reason that we have city boards and commissions is that we have citizens engaged in the process of governance and finance and service delivery in our city. And so look to those folks 
And for those of you who want more citizen oversight, I would challenge you to contact your city council member. If I'm that person or Joe is that person, please talk to us tonight. We would love to have you involved at that level of, of citizen oversight of the city, the city boards and commissions. I want to thank the city staff, our city manager, Cheryl Scully, happy birthday. Um, our police and fire representatives, thanks for the work that you do. And uh, you all have a great night. Joe, did you want to make some comments? Okay. You all have a great night. Go Spurs.